There is a tale that is told. A desert queen journeyed north with a caravan of riches to pay tribute to a king and his one god. The story of a queen conquered by a king before she returned to her own land laden with gifts. That is the tale you are meant to believe, which means most of it is a lie. The truth is far more than even the storytellers could conjure. The riches more priceless, the secrets more corrosive, the love and betrayal more passionate and devastating. Across the narrow sea, the pillars of the great temple once bore my name, Bilkis, daughter of the moon. Here to the west, the palace columns bear another, Makeda, woman of fire. To those I served as a priestess and unifier, I wore the name of my kingdom, Saba. To the Israelites, I was queen of the spice lands they called Sheba. They also called me Hor. The history keepers will no doubt tell their own tale, and the priests another. It is the men's accounts that seem to survive a world obsessed with conquest. Our actions beyond bedchamber and hearth remembered only when we leave their obscurity. And so we become infamous because we were not invisible. It is harder for queens who have no luxury of meekness. History does not know how to reconcile our ambition or our power when we are strong enough to survive it. And so our stories are blackened from the fire of righteous indignation by those who envy our imagined fornications. We become temptresses, harlots, and heretics. I have been all and none of these, depending on who tells the tale. Yes, there is indeed a tale. It begins with this. I never meant to become queen.